In our last Q example, we used we combined Dask distributed with normal Python queues to create a linear processing pipeline, just moving data through a sequence of functions. This was very easy to do, but it was somewhat restrictive in that it was just, it was just linear. In this example, we're going to break out that linear case by multiplexing a, Pyth a Python queue. So the tool we're going to need here is this function multiplex, which is going to take an input queue, a normal Python queue, and a number, and it's going to produce three output queues, um, each of which have all of the data of the input queue. So I put some piece of data into the input, it will be end up being recreated in all of the outputs. It's a simple, small Python function. Uh, it's, you, know, you could write many different functions just like this one. So given that function, we're going to make a more complex data processing pipeline. So I've connected to a local scheduler here. This is just my local laptop. And what we're going to do is we're going to have three functions, increment, double, and add. Increment and double both take one input and produce one output. Add takes two inputs and produces one output. And what we're going to do is we're going to have an input queue. We're going to scatter that, that queue out to the cluster. We're going to multiplex that queue into two different queues of futures, A and B. Then we're going to map increment across one of those queues. And we're going to map double twice against the other queue, just for a little bit, a little bit, bit of variety. Then we're going to combine both of those queues with add and get, get out a queue of results. So what I've just said is what we're implementing here in this, this cell. Again, we're making an input queue, again, a normal Python queue. We're scattering that out to the cluster. So queue here is now a queue of futures. We're multiplexing that queue of futures out to be two different queues. Uh, on queue one, we're mapping increment. And on queue two, we're mapping double twice. Finally, we take both of those output queues and map add against both. Then we gather those queues into an output queue of actual results on a local machine. So we run that. It runs. Uh, it ran very quickly. And that's because no actual work has happened yet. We haven't put any data into the queues. Let's go ahead and put one piece of data into our input queue. And we see that instantly our worker starts up and does our work for us. Uh, we see that we see one add function, one increment, and two occurrences of double, which matches what we expect. Uh, out queue has already received our result. It's already gathered. And we get out the number six. So one, we add to it, we get two. One, we double it twice, we get four. We add two and four, we get six. OK, so make this a little bit more interesting. Let's go ahead and uh, just start up a little function in a thread that's going to feed numbers to our uh, input queue. As we feed numbers to our input queue, all of the queues are populating each other and, and data combination is happening. Um, and so we see you know, the cluster springs to life doing all of, all of its work. Let's go ahead and just read from our output results, and we'll see results are coming back in a timely fashion. Here we're just printing, but you know, presumably you'd want to save your result to some, some system. OK, so it's going to go ahead and keep going like this for, for forever. Let's go ahead and just to, while we're here, show that the whole system is elastic. So we're going to start up a new worker. And it starts up, and suddenly um, we have more workers happening. So now where we had four cores, we now have eight. We can kill that worker, and it will you know, nicely recover. So that's it. Thank you for your time.